Namaste everyone and welcome back to Live Stronger. Today we are going to work on our hamstrings uh, with a compound movement and our quads with some isolation work, our core for with some oblique work. So straight away I am going to start with the greatest stretch wherein I do 5 repetitions on each side of rotating and stretching. Dedicating this minute or two every day ensures that I have full range of mobility in my working sets. So this is how I warm up for my exercises and I hope you are following to do the same. If you don't by any means prefer this particular stretch, please go ahead and do any other kind of dynamic stretches. But I would advise and recommend to do any of the dynamic stretches before you start the workouts. If you have any particular dynamic stretch which is focused on a body part which you are going to work with, you can do those also in specific order. Now, walking on a treadmill for 5 minutes is absolutely fine, but I would still uh, go ahead and do dynamic stretches to ensure my mobility is at its top notch before I start with my weightlifting. Post completing my greatest stretch, I do my mandatory deep squat. Make sure I squat as deep as possible for the full range of motion. Stay there for a few seconds, feeling the stretch in my thighs, making sure my glute is completely activated before I proceed into my next stretch for the day. So for the next stretch, I'm going to do the hip openers, which is very regular. I have done this almost on every leg day workout. Make sure you balance yourself properly here. As you can see, I'm using a slight amount of cushion under my knee because I was a little bit uncomfortable on the floor today. Using a weight is absolutely a matter of choice. If you're not comfortable using a weight, you can do without it. But I prefer to do with weight to add a little bit of more stretch. Five repetitions each side. Holding off each stretch for a couple of seconds is more than sufficient. Feeling that stretch in your hip muscles and inner thighs. The important part is to make sure you squeeze your glutes every time at your starting position wherein you're at the straight position. Make sure you squeeze your glutes and as you go down, try to hold on to it as long as possible, ensuring that your hips remain straight throughout the range of motion. Post completing my dynamic stretches, I moved on to a bit of muscle activation or a wake up exercise for my glutes because I was feeling a lot more quad dominant. So I did about 20 repetitions of glute bridge. Now you might start feeling the activation within 15 repetitions. That's absolutely fine. Do as many as you require and start feeling your glutes with every repetition. Make sure you get straight by squeezing your glutes as hard as possible to get your hips straight. Try to not use much of your quads because in this particular moment also, if you're quad dominant, you tend to use your quads to get straight. Just make sure that you're only working with your glutes to get yourself in a straight line. That's the reason it's called a glute bridge. This particular exercise can also be done on a uh, setup or an equipment with a barbell. That's usually called the hip thrust exercise. But I prefer to do this as a warm up before I start with my working sets. So for my working sets, I'm going to do RDLs, 4 sets, 10 repetitions with 60 seconds break in between. Again, I'm going to use straps. You may also do the same to ensure that your grip strength doesn't compromise the number of repetitions you can achieve. You can also use gloves if, you, if you're more comfortable with those. The setup is pretty simple. Grab a bar, uh, grab a barbell from a comfortable height. Get your back as straight as possible. Now, how do you get your back as straight as possible is by pushing the bar into your legs. This basically pushes your hands, trying to get your hands behind the midline of your body. As you can see in the video, how I keep my upper back absolutely tight. And that ensures my lower back doesn't take any load onto itself. You need not go very low. Just go enough. Now, how do you go down? Is basically engaging your glutes, pushing them behind. Use your glutes to go down. Push your glutes as far behind as possible while letting the bar slowly go down on your legs while you're trying to push your hands behind your body. This will ensure the load always stays on your hamstrings and your glutes. And when you want to get up, use your glutes. Squeeze them as hard as possible from the lower position itself to get your hips straight. 
like we have practiced in our glute bridge so now you know why i did that particular exercise before going into the rdls to ensure that i have an, i have enough amount of activation there pretty simple exercise post completing that i moved on to my isolation work wherein i have done leg extensions four sets 12 repetitions started with alternative leg and then moved on to both legs at a time the reason i was doing only four sets of all the exercises unlike i used to do five sets is because i'm a little bit fatigued i have been doing night shifts so my body was not completely up to mark in terms of going full out in the workout so i said okay let me drop a set and continue with the workouts try to get as much work done by my muscles as possible so again on leg extensions the focus has to be getting as much isolation as possible on your quadricep muscles to ensure that always be comfortably seated and be completely in contact with the seat never let yourself bounce up and down of the seat lay back as far behind as possible and let the leg cushion push your legs as far behind as possible so i want to start from as far behind as possible and try kicking from there and get as straight as possible technically that would create maximum amount of tension in your quad muscles as you can see in the video how my quad muscles were getting extremely activated with every repetition and that totally burnt my legs out post completing my isolation work i moved on to my inner thigh work using the adductor machine which i have at my disposal now for if this particular equipment is not available with you you can use uh, elastic bands or elastic tubes to do the similar kind of motion i have done that in my previous videos also a pretty simple exercise to ensure you get maximum amount of activation in your thighs usually one of those muscles which is quite commonly overlooked when comes to training your legs this particular muscle also helps you in stabilizing your knee a lot because when you're running or walking at a fast pace and going across each leg this muscle helps you stabilize that knee joint a lot better while quads extend your knee and your hamstrings flex your knee these are the muscles which ensure the lateral movements are controlled so ensure each and every repetition is as slow as possible try to get the maximum amount of stretch and maximum amount of contraction that ensures optimum growth for inner thighs they can go sore very quickly so three sets is more than sufficient 12 repetitions slow repetitions should get the job done you might not require more rest but if you feel so you can you are absolutely at your choice can take more than 45 seconds of rest you can take up to 6 minutes of rest because i was tired too but not so tired that i needed more break but i if by any reason if you are more fatigued than me please go ahead and take a longer break that's absolutely fine because legs tend to consume a lot more energy than any other body part as you can see in the video i tried to go as slow as possible create a stretch and then come back as slow as possible making sure my muscles are not using momentum to get the contraction done but they are actually working really hard to get the contraction done this exercise might seem pretty simple and easy to be done but if taken a challenging enough weight can put a lot of demand on your body here again i try to be in contact with the seat and my backrest as much as possible i don't bounce around get up or try to bend behind just stay as stable as possible and isolate the muscle post completing my adductor work i moved on to my core work wherein i started doing the side plank raises so as you can see in my first set i chose to do it on a bench but very quickly realized that that was too stressful for me it was getting really hard for me to complete my repetitions so i moved on to a step up box which is half the height so you can do the same 10 to 12 repetitions on each side controlled range of motion you can use cushioning under your elbow to be comfortable there will be a little bit of stress on your shoulder but nothing so uh, concerning it's absolutely fine as long as you keep your uh, keep yourself balanced try to keep your hips as straight as possible and feel the contraction and stretch happening in your obliques every time you drop down and try to get back up your obliques one should be the one doing the maximum amount of work there will be a little bit of work done by your leg muscles 
but I did not feel it much. I was feeling all of my contractions on my oblique muscles itself. So that was a good set for me. And I had pretty good soreness post one hour of completing this exercise. After this, I moved on to my forearm endurance work wherein I did the vertical hangs as usual, trying to achieve that 100 second mark post workout on a regular basis. I'm still uh, today because I was tired, I was just under a minute. I think I dropped down at about 55 or 57 second. I try to time myself as perfectly as possible to ensure I keep a track on my progress. Now here you may go ahead and use gloves, but I don't recommend using straps because that would defeat the purpose of the grip training. And that's it for today. We are done with our exercises. Post completing our exercises, I moved on to my static stretching, wherein again, nothing new, pretty easy and pretty simple stretch. Take a support, place your feet on the support behind your back and try to get as straight as possible, stretching your quadricep muscle, which originates from at your hip joint and goes and attach itself or inserts itself at the knee joint. So if you take these two points and ext extend them as much as possible, you create a stretch in the muscle, holding for 20 seconds and you would get an optimum amount of stretch. If you feel a lot of tightness and discomfort, please go ahead and do a little bit of foam rolling before doing the stretch. It's absolutely fine. Or if you're still uncomfortable, just continue doing foam rolling. The stretch need not be done. Do the stretch only once you're comfortable enough with the uh, slight amount of pain which you or uh, tightness which you feel. Post my quad stretch, I moved on to my hamstring stretch. Again, pretty simple. Place your feet at a height. Push your glutes as far behind as possible. Keep your leg as straight as possible. You can pull your toes towards your shins to create an extra stretch on your traveling right from your calf muscles to your hamstrings. Bending down helps by, because that pushes your glutes a little bit behind. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you did like the video, please drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. Any feedback in the comments, I would definitely respond. Make sure you hold your stretches for at least 20 seconds each. And if you need, do a couple of sets. More than a couple of sets is not required with the amount of work which we have done today. If you feel uncomfortable, make sure you do the foam rolling. I always uh, tell people that if you're uncomfortable with a static stretch, quite uncomfortable, regress to foam rolling. If still uncomfortable, regress to heating. Basically put a heat pad on the muscle to relieve the tension. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.